we are we are very happy with the results the last time anyway just to add but at the, at, at the same time i want to find out what your take is in respect to the local league and sponsorship from corporate Ghana and um, what you can do with your experience in football management and how the telecos can help restore the local league. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Um, sponsorship is not a philanthropy. It's no philanthropy. Uh, those of us who are into sports must realize that sporting activities are entertainment products. And telcos and third-party corporate bodies require a platform which can give them visibility, which they can use to, to communicate their brand. So for the telcos and other third-party companies that you want to come into sports, we must ensure that the, the products that we provide the entertainment is fit for purpose. That's the only way that we will be, will be able, they will be able to attract them and so that they will ensure that we provide them the opportunity to use the sporting platform to, to communicate their brands. So what we need to do, and unfortunately, our sporting industry in the country has really fallen behind other, other industries in the application, in the adoption, and the use of modern management techniques to, to build their brands. That is why we see that we are not able to attract sponsorship. Once, what a lot of people don't realize that people, for example, football clubs are not in the business of football. They are in the entertainment business through football for a profit. Once you begin to look at products in a competitive manner, there are certain ways that you must structure them to give value. Unfortunately, that's what we've not been able to do. That's why the telcos are very reluctant and other people are reluctant unlike other countries to provide value one of the most objective and unbiased assessments of whether the product we are providing is fit for purpose is the people people don't go to stadium they are our main customers both the live audience and then the on live audience they don't do that so no one will come and associate with you we need to reform and that's the only way we'll be able to attract sponsorship thank you very much Um, Honorable Nikwase, you have a question? <laughs> Honorable Vincent. Um, okay, Honorable Che. There appears to be a conspiracy of house supporters. Because they were warning me that uh, they were warning me that there's a, a house match that they want to finish. To go. Is there a conspiracy going on here? Uh, Quater, please. Mr. Chairman, I'm a great Olympics fan. So, you know what I mean? Mr. Kono. Cool down, cool down. Um, there is this perception that football officiating the commercial interests is more important than the real handling of, of, of officiating. In other words, the investment in the game where refereeing uh, officiating matches, the interest in that area uh, is more prominent than, than the real match itself. Do you agree to that school of thought? Because I have witnessed a middle leg match being played at Sappers Station, where a team was badly handled in terms of officiating. I have to step in and told the managers that the way they handle the matches is not in the interest of football. I've been an active footballer before. So when you see a match being badly officiated, you can see. There is that commercial interest these days that is gaining grounds in football. That instead of the referees handling the matches the way it is, they look at commercial interest and all that. What do you think is the cause and what can be done about it? Um, uh, do you, are you saying that the referees consider the commercial aspects as well as considering what the technical decisions for them to take? Exactly so. Mm, 
I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I, don't, no, I, 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 I don't have any reason. I don't, I'm not too sure about that. There could be lapses where they are not, but I'm not too sure about that. My second question, Mr. Chairman. You were part of the Parliamentary Select Committee Trade Industry and Tourism when we visited Trade Fair site. And we were not happy with the presentation that was given to us by the Chief Executive and his team. Uh, there are some recommendations that were made that we yet to bring to Parliament for discussion and all that. As, as their voice, what do you think you can do now that you had opportunity to go into government so that we can bring trade fair back to East uh, normal self when we're kids, we all go to trade fair and all that. What do you think you can do now that you have the opportunity to come and serve in government so that the people of La can benefit, i.e. in terms of their compensation, how trade fair can be uh, brought up to create jobs for the youth in La and all that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, let me make it. I was just a friend of the of the trade of the of the of the committee that visited trade fair. As you rightly said, this really under the remit of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Uh, under the, uh, and then. But as since it's actually situated on my uh, land, I'm sure I'll get closer to the Ministry of Trade and the industry to ensure that uh, the interest of the people and then the, uh, I think the issue is that, uh, Mr. Chairman, the issue is that the, the trade fair is in the state in which it is because uh, it's, uh, then again, it's not fit for purpose. And I'm sure based on recommendation and discussions uh, we had there, once uh, we'll get closer to the Ministry of Trade to see how we can uh, build it to be a competitive exhibition site. Uh, for trade fair to go back to what it used to be, we may have to have a second look at it because things have changed and things are different now. All right, and I'm about to share PJ. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, Honorable. Yes. Um, there's something I want to know. Would you agree to the assertion that there are more foreign stake in our telecommunication industry? And if it is so, what will you do to assist your minister to increase the local participation within the industry? And is there a local content law in, this, in the telecom industry? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think one of the mains in, in any industry that you get local participation if, if you go through the stock market. So if, uh, as a ministry, we think it's, uh, we'll have a look at it, if the policies that we go through so that local people can own part of it through the stock exchange, I think I'll support my minister to do that. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, in my constituency, I was encouraging people to pay attention and pay their TV licenses fee. But uh, I had a feedback, and the feedback was that they have been paying the fees, but they are not having quality programs from the TV stations. I don't know whether they want more of the Kungu Maya jazz uh, or what, but I believe that something has changed but you, what would you recommend to enrich the uh, the viewers to encourage them to be paying their license fee thank you thank you very much i think that we uh we are migrating from the analog to the digital terrestrial tv which will ensure a clearer picture which will ensure a better quality sound and then a more interactive TV experience. So I'm sure once we get there, where uh, the issues are regarding the quality in terms of uh, the view will change. But with regards to the content, I think it's a competitive thing, which we as a ministry, we can also only ensure as a regulator to encourage them. It's a competitive thing when, uh, if they, they have to do quality programs uh, to ensure that 
uh, um, I mean, uh, to, uh, to ensure that they attract the audiences. As for TV license, I think I, I actually share their, their, their concerns that if you're not good quality, but they must pay. Because it's, uh, I think it's law that they must pay for the TV license. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You buy, you buy, you purchase unit on your phone, and within a minute they said your your, your unit is finished. What what can you do to help us? I mean the consumers. To to. to, to Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Anna. are you finished? You buy a unit on your phone, and within a twinkle of an eye, it says you have to recharge again. It means that the customers have been cheated. What can you do to protect the customer? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think that we, the first step is to, uh, all of us, I think we, are, uh, we need to be educated on how to bundle the credit that we buy because uh, we, we are moving right into broadband where data, data, data is quite expensive. So we need to be educated to ensure that we don't just recharge now, but we bundle it to ensure that uh, the, uh, we have long, long usage for the credit that uh, we pay. With regards to, I'm sure uh, uh, during the interview, my, my, the virtue of my minister, she made it clear there's the issue about consumer protection which is going to come in. They will look into those matters to ensure that at least there's fair competition. But I think it's more to do with education and bonding. Thank you very much. Your minister was here and then she promised that she's going to erect some marks <laughs> around the uh, Paripari Tokurano in the Karachi East area. And for a month, we are not seeing anything. Um, will you reinforce that? It looks as if when you sit here. You the minister is here. She says that you're putting words in her mouth. Uh, let her be clarify what. I have no recollection of making any such promise during my vetting. Which town did you say I said I was going to? You said I, I mentioned Karkari, <laughs> Tokurano, and Asukoko. And you promised that when you come, when you take office, you are going to do that. And I have not seen it. In that case, leave, leave the deputy minister out. So, the minister will take so, care of it, So please. she has been in office for one, one month. I've not seen anything. Will you assure us that when you come, you are going to help us? Uh, Honorable Dominic, please. You can't answer for the minister's <laughs> promise to Parakpari people. Um, I'm sure that the minister is here. She's a member of this committee. She knows her office in the ministry. You will follow up with, with, with the minister. Uh, if you want to ask another question, I'll permit you. Now that Mr. says she didn't say it, I know that I when I ask another question. But on a more serious note, it means that you are going to incorporate education in your programs now. Because it's like, if you don't uh, include uh, education, then we might not know how to use our units. So will you assure us that you uh, educate the, the masses as to what to do to uh, opt optimally uh, utilize our, our units? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, no, no, uh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, definitely. I think during the veteran of my minister, she indicated that we are going to engage in a lot of stakeholder engagement with all the telcos, the users, the consumers, uh, and the uh, MNOs to, to, to educate them on how to ensure that, uh, I mean, the efficient use of the investment that the things that they buy uh, not just on all, on all aspects of, of 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 what we are doing in the communication industry thank you very much okay barbara thank you very much honorable chair and congratulations honorable thank you <laughs> looking at your minister I mean, she's part of this uh, committee. I know she, she believes in standards. I want to find out from you what you do to assist her make the Ministry of Communication an outstanding one. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, first of all, let me say how privileged I feel to be working with uh, my minister and, and, my, and my other colleague, I think. 
I think my minister is proven beyond every every uh, every doubt that she's she's very capable, a very good leader. When you look at her record, um, I think that when you when you look at my background, uh, coming from uh, uh, patients background, private sector, sports, community, and I believe that uh, I'll be able to bring my diverse experiences to add to. Uh, and to support my minister and the whole um, and the whole com and the whole communications ministry, I'm driven by the president's clarion call for a Ghana beyond aid. And when you look at you realize my postgraduate is in strategy. I believe in trying to position this country to continue to uh, be the uh, to, uh, to continue to uh, hold on to leadership in deregulation, liberalization, the communication industry, and the capacity that we have to make this country competitive in terms of com uh, communication infrastructure. And uh, so that we'll, be, we'll continue to attract a lot of people because we live in a communication age. So we need to position ourselves if we are to be sustainably competitive. And this is a background that I'll bring to support uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to support my minister and my other colleague and to ensure that the service quality that we, we provide in this country becomes number one on the African continent. Thank you very much. I want to find out from you what you will be remembered for after four years. What you would be remembered for Thank you. What you would like to be remembered for? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I, I would really love to be remembered as someone who supported his minister and the communications uh, ministry and, and the whole team and the whole team of uh, and all the agencies are, uh, that we are, are going, we are going to work with to provide the best uh, the, the best uh, IT infrastructure and the best transformation in the communication industry. That's what I want to be remembered for. Okay, Honorable Vice Chair. Honorable nominee, congratulations once again. Thank you very much. I want to ask you, um, the telecoms, the telecommunication um, companies usually erect um, masts in various communities and all that. My concern, which I would want to know how you would be addressing it, is situations where they trespass on other people's property to mount these uh, masts. I, I have a personal experience in my garden. I was away in church. I mean, in front of my house where I've done my small garden. In the middle of the front view of my house, there was a mast being mounted. I'm sure many Ghanaians have experienced same. How would you address a situation like this? And how would you advise your minister on the way forward? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think the the action of uh, a must being erected on your private property it's it's a, it, uh, without your permission it's against the law. So I'll, so I think uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll be supporting my minister for us to address this to ensure that before a mass is erected anywhere in the country, the environmental protection the the stakeholder, uh, all the stakeholders, the permits that must be required, like any other uh, installation to be done, are acquired. Uh, because um, for them to just come in into your private property is, 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 is against the law. Thank you very much. Are you aware or do you know of any study that reveals that the, the closeness of these masts to the human being? or the contact could be hazardous um, medically. Is that so? Have no. There's no empirical study on that. But you know that is the mentality of many Ghanaians. So if we want to 
promotes and widen up the scope of communication in our country. And we have this, um, um, uh, this um, perception on the minds of people. I'm sure it's not the first time you're hearing this. How would you address the situation so that people come to terms with the fact that ICT or communication, telecom? Uh, radiation that people say, I'm not aware of that. But to, but, uh, however, these things are critical infrastructure which is required for us to be able to expand and, and pursue the policy of the universal assets. So as uh, I will support my minister and the whole ministry for us to engage all stakeholders, uh, especially, I mean, all, all those involved in, 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 in uh, and related to uh, this erection of mass so that one, they, they, they realize that we need this infrastructure. If we are to improve the service and, and ensure that they, we embrace uh, uh, the drive for the broadband experience. So and then engage, uh, educate them via all stakeholders on the need for them to accept that and then uh, for them to know, uh, to assuage their fears that such things are not uh, uh, really true until proven otherwise scientifically. Thank you very much. Lastly, what are the qualities you're bringing on board at the ministry to assist your minister Form. What are the qualities that we should expect on the job? Uh, first of all, I think it's teamwork. Uh, to manage the cry hearts of folk, uh, you must know that you need to, you need to take everybody everybody uh, uh, on board. And apart from that, uh, I, I have a very very insatiable appetite and desire for performance and transformation. Um, I, I recall the first question the Honorable Cabo asked me about the elections, how we were able to do it in Lada de Copa, which was thought impossible. Yes, uh, I, 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 I have that, that, that insatiable desire and the leadership quality to support my, uh, my, my, my minister. And I'm sure you realize that I've also been with the public service for some time. So I'll, definitely I want to bring all these things to bear for the whole team to, to succeed and hopefully uh, make sure that wherever my minister goes, uh, me, me and my colleague, we follow her to wherever we go. But we, we want to work as a good team. You follow her wherever she, wherever she goes. That's a very dangerous statement. <laughs> Miss, Mr. Ekufo won't be happy. <laughs> it's, it, it's work related because already I'm learning so much from her and my other colleagues. And it's, it's really a nice experience. Uh, it's, it's only work related. Thank you very much. Uh, would you want to repeat that? <laughs> oh, uh, you don't want to? Okay. <laughs> Vimit. Sharp. Um, I saw that you had um, requested on the Old Vandals Ghana platform that the choir should be here. Are they here? Um, I'm not aware. I, I was never a choir master, just a JCR president. So I don't know whether since they've been here, since you were a choir master, whether they've come to pay homage. So maybe. <laughs> I, I didn't request them to come. No, we stand that I was a choir master. I didn't request them to come. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you asked them to come, but I haven't seen anybody here so far. <laughs> well, it means that. The, it's only in the hall that they make papa. They couldn't able. <laughs> they could come here. <laughs> Very well. I have no questions for you. Um, uh, we thank you for attending on the committee. Titles will acknowledge the dignitaries who are here. After that, we will discharge you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. The following people are here to support our colleague. The first on the list is Mr. Clement Edmund Odotei, father. Mrs. Rebecca Abicho Odotei, mother. 
Mrs. Prisla Akle Odute spouse. Dr. Ni Kubi Tetechuru La Manche and President of La Traditional Council. Ni Ajay Kofe, the fourth, La Shikiteli. Ni Odute Ajay La Jasiche. Ni Otin Granaki, Granaki, the first, Abafun Akutunche. Ni BK Yamu, acting lynching, Akuchunche. Ni Mama M. Kwashi, acting la man, Uchiame. JT Aye, la stool secretary. Oko Ajay Mensa, la stool treasurer. Baita Gogo, stenographer secretary to Nila. Lak Mawulomon, 